born in Houston, Texas, and now living in Ohio, Megan just finished her second year at The Ohio State University. She was studying biomedical science for the first two years and had the original intention of going to medical school. She now would like to continue her discipleship journey as she continues to learn more about prayer and the lives of the saints. This is a Know His Love story. I think, um, yeah, there's so many times in our life where um, we kind of fall um, into little trenches of not knowing or doubting. But ultimately, God's love is always there. And um, yeah, I think I've always known of God's great and immense love. I mean, He's so awesome. He's all infinite majesty and goodness, all powerful. He created all things and He knows all things. Um, but in those like deep trench moments of like not knowing or um, doubting, of course, um, I've had those. And um, it, and it's interesting because um, I think, and I think we can all relate to this, but like in moments of like conversion, um, it, it typically is a moment of doubting and not knowing. And then um, with a great grace of consolation that picks us up out of that. Um, but of course, he, like God, he's all infinite majesty. He knows everything. Um, so in those moments of like doubt or um, I've noticed that I've also been fearful. Um, so I think a big moment was um, when I was in the fifth grade, actually, um, I was so fearful of everything, every little thing. Um, so like, <laughs> it's kind of silly, but I was afraid that like my house would catch on fire. I was afraid that I would get in a car accident. I was afraid that my dad away on a business trip would um, somehow like not make it back. And um, I was faced with all of these fears at such a young age. And I, I knew of God's love and I knew that um, his way was not um, to dwell in this fear. Um, and it was in those moments where I made um, a cry. I was like, I don't know God's love. Um, so I was really blessed um, to articulate that um, and to run to my mother, um, my biological mother, and um, ask. I, I asked her, I was like, I need more education because I know that God loves me, but I, I don't feel it. So there's something missing here, something um, that's um, not right. Um, and so um, I knew of God's love, like I said, um, at like that young of an age, I'm not sure if I had like a real like understanding of God's ways, um, but I knew that fear wasn't a place in that. And of course, like ever since then, um, had more conversions like these, um, especially like confirmation or um, of course, that was like a big conversion. And then um, another big time where I really, really doubted God's presence was um, going into freshman year of college. Um, I was in a relationship and um, I, I realized now, and especially like in the relationship that I was actually doubting God's presence. Um, I just cared for this person a lot um, and he was faithful too, um, but he also had lots of doubts. And um, in, in a sense, just like desiring to um, like please this man um, in the sense of like worldly expectations, as well as just going along with um, his beliefs. And I started to realize that um, in a way, um, I was taking in the world's expectations of what I should believe. And the world was telling him and was telling me um, that I should doubt God's existence. And um, again, I realized this isn't right. Um, so um, in big moments, um, I just like laid in front of the blessed sacrament and I just surrendered everything and surrendered my relationship, surrendered my college experience and said like, God, like this isn't right. Like I want to know your ways. I want to know um, who you are and your love more intimately. Um, and I know the path that I'm on is just um, not your greatest will for my life. Um, this is not um, according to your ways. Um, so yeah, I think um, I've noticed that like fear has made me doubt and um, doubt God's love and as well as um, just like expectations of and opinions of those around me, um, especially those of the world and um, as well as like my flesh desire to um, please those around me. Um, and also like every time we sin, 
every time I sin, I doubt his love and I choose a lesser love. Um, so each day learning um, to um, love God more and to not doubt his love, because if we were to never doubt his love, we would never sin. Um, because sin just doesn't make sense. Our God is so loving. Um, so every day it's, it's a conversion of a heart, right? Um, yeah, I think it's so beautiful that the Lord pursues us so hard. Um, he pursues us when um, we're not in right order. And in those like moments of great consolation, there's like um, specific, specific instances um, that are so like unique to ourselves and um, that he really like pursues us with um, and that it becomes personal. And that's what is so delighting to the heart um, that makes his love so real. Um, so yeah, um, I guess like, how does this change how I view God? I think like our hearts and especially my heart is like so like searching for like the truth and of God's love. And like, that's what like our hearts were created for. So in those like personal moments when his love becomes so real, um, like unquestionably real, um, it's like um, such consolation that like what we're made for is true. And like what we're searching for, what we're going to mass for every Sunday is true and real. Um, it just like delights the heart so much and um, gives me like so much joy. And um, honestly, just uh, feel like immersed in light. Um, and it's so beautiful too, because in those moments of consolation, um, great realization that um, others might um, be in that um, moment of trench of desolation, but um, great hope is instilled uh, that everyone else will also experience at some point in their life, this personal um, love of God that will um, help them realize the truth that, that we were all rooted in and that we're all created for, um, which is to love God and to serve him and um, to receive his love too. And I think that's a big thing, um, just in the sense of like, God pursues us in love every single second of every single day. And it's just um, disposing our hearts to receive his love um, and, it's hard to um, kind of, I guess, turn away from the world, which we know and is seen, but what is invisible um, is God's love and his entire being. Um, but in those moments of personal love, it becomes so real that um, we are able to um, reject our former ways and to repent um, and to promise to amend our lives, to love God and to love those around us. Um, I think you have to look at the word beloved. Um, there's like two components that really stick out to, you, to me. Um, that's be and loved. Um, and to be a beloved daughter of God, all you have to do is to be loved, um, which is so hard. And um, thankfully, uh, I was pondering over this during my freshman year of college and I had a realization by the grace of God um, instilled in my heart to make me realize what it means to be loved um, as a daughter. And it's kind of silly. So I was just walking on campus at Ohio State and I looked to my left and there was this air vent coming out of one of the dorms and coming out of this air or on the side of the air vents, there was a little flap that kind of broke up the air and steam as it came out of the laundry room. And I had a realization like, whoa, a man created this air vent with a flap and he created the invention of the flap specifically for the, um, for the intention of going up and down and breaking up the steam. Um, and then I pondered about the, um, the flap itself on the air vent and I'm like, whoa, it's doing um, the will of, um, of its creator. Um, so the purpose that the man created the flap of the air vent for so perfectly just by like flapping up and down, which is kind of silly. Um, but I realized this and then I took a few more steps and then also to my left, there was a rose bush. And then I was like, whoa, God created this rose bush. And this rose bush is doing the will of the father so perfectly just by being a rose bush. And it's causing so many people delight um, just by being who um, God created it to be. And both of these instances, I realized that, well, like God created us. That's our identity. It's just 
um, a daughter of God or a son of God. And um, if God just created me to be a daughter, all that I have to do is to be, and then intrinsically I'm loved. Um, and that like changed everything for me. I was like, wow. And um, also like continuing to walk in this identity of being a beloved daughter and still, still learning. Um, thankfully, this past month, actually a month ago, I was able to attend a retreat. And um, this also helped, this retreat, um, it was simple, simple message, but it really helped reorder my um, my identity, identity as a beloved daughter of God. And it really helped me to realize um, like what our purpose is here and what it means. Um, so yeah, like you said, like filial relationship with God, um, it's so beautiful. And I think this is really, really key to really just be loved that um, we love our father so much that we don't want to sin. Um, and I think I was caught up in earning my belovedness um, before, like, um, that's what the world tells us. Like we need to earn like the highest grades. We need to earn um, the highest position. We need to earn the highest wage, but that is just like so counteractive to um, like the way that God works because intrinsically, just like that rose bush, we are loved by God just by existing um, because he created our souls um, and he is all infinite majesty um, and he offered us life and it's such a gift um, and entering into that filial um filial fear of God is that um, I don't want to offend my God because he created me and um, he's worthy of um, greater love um, and also just like resting in the identity of um, just being God's chosen creation um, and um, loving him um, and going to mass and going to adoration, um, not for like seeking our own pleasure, but just because God is great um, and he's worthy of being loved. And I found myself also, and still even every day, I um, need to recenter myself that um, we don't have to understand everything. Um, and it's okay to doubt, um, but um, don't like keep those doubts to yourself um, completely and entirely surrender those doubts and let the Holy Spirit um, just uh, speak into those doubts um, and to straighten our path because God exists and um, Christ is present in the Eucharist. Um, and those are, those are facts and we can't be deceived from those facts. Um, so when we have doubts, um, just inviting the Holy Spirit to um, reorder them rather than like claiming them um, for ourselves and being lost in them. Um, and also another thing is like trying to understand God way, God's ways um, it's it's pretty impossible and it's a really convoluted and a long path to earn God's love that way. Um, so I found myself that um, each morning I just need to recenter myself and say, okay, what do I, what do I know? I know that I'm existing right now. So of course God must love me. He, um, he thought um, me into existence. Of course he loves me. And um, of course, like reminding myself throughout the day too, like, wow, like Jesus, God became man um, and died for our sins. Of course he loves us. Um, and like all of these things, like I didn't, um, I didn't um, like merit my existence into being. God did that for me. Um, and in order to just be, um, then I am, I'm loved intrinsically. And same with um, Jesus dying on the cross for us, um, just by being and accepting this truth and um, proclaiming Christ as our Lord and Savior, um, just by being and accepting that and proclaiming that, that is um, being loved. Um, so yeah, there's just like no, no earning that we can do to earn God's love. There's no um, like understanding or um, coming to complex understandings and rationales that will allow us to earn God's love um, just by being and like realizing like we exist. So of course God's, God loves us. Um, I feel like that has helped me the most in understanding what it means to be a child of God. Yeah, I think every day, um, 
just in little ways in um, surrendering my heart and desire to know God. Um, and even in the moments where I feel in desolation, even throughout the little days, I'm just like um, sounding out my plea to God um, for his love. And sometimes he answers so generously. Sometimes he um, <laughs> waits a little bit, um, but that's okay because he's perfect. And I want to, uh, we need to honor his perfection and um, his plan for our life. Um, but in little ways, such as like, um, little ways of you pray for something little and then it gets answered right then. And I'm like, wow, like he knows me so intimately. Like he, he knows everything. He's so perfect. And I just feel so loved and so delighted. And also I rejoice in like the big consolations too, or um, any consolation in between. Um, so in the moments where I'm like, wow, God loves me so much. Um, most of them happen at mass. So um, during like a first communion um, where I'm just like basking in the Lord's presence and um, just feel uh, God's like infinite majesty right there before me um, in the Eucharist. Um, I think uh, disposing my heart to that and desiring that in my heart um, to fully embrace his love in that way. Um, he really pours out so much consolation and it's so hard to describe it. And I think it's so personal too, but um, really just feel like that whole like atmosphere of, of just the church was just filled with God's love and um, like light and um, so golden too. Um, and just, I know the heavens were rejoicing. And so I think um, my most favorite ways um, to, just really um, embrace his love or those moments of um, just one, like humbling myself to really see how good God is um, and really just embrace any consolation, whether that's um, just like delighting of the heart um, or just feeling like completely illuminated. Um, I really thank God for those moments, but um, even in the consolation, or, or even in desolation, so um, during trials too, like that's a that's a symbol of God's love too, that he would trust us um, to go through trials. And um, so I'm learning now that I don't need to seek those consolations or even um, need those consolations to feed my love of God, or um, I, I need to just love God for who he is rather than um, loving him just in those moments of consolation. So I'm learning to um, really just love him and thank him and realize that like, wow, he does trust me to um, like go through this trial and maybe it's desolation, maybe it's a hardship um, I face in life. Um, but like, that's him loving me too, because he's just purifying me. Um, so I'm learning to love him um, in all aspects too. Um, so um, it, it's kind of interesting, but um, I do I do rejoice in those trials and hardships that he would he would trust me to return to him even through those moments of desolation. Um, I really just thank him for loving me that way too. Yeah, I would say um, just one like thank God uh, for your existence um, and thank God for um, like Jesus' presence in the Eucharist. Um, and also encouragement that um, like this is like non-negotiable, like God exists. Um, like it's a fact, it's a truth. Um, there's no like shying away from it. And it's also reassuring too that honestly, I think that um, Every, like no one would be able to function if they didn't know deep, deep down, even if it's like the smallest um, piece um, in your heart or soul that um, God loves us. I, I don't think anyone would be able to function without that deep, deep, deep knowledge that God exists. Um, so that's reassuring. And um, it's super reassuring that um, we all know um, and we all are rooted in this truth of God's existence and his love for us. Um, so that's one thing, like a baseline, like non-negotiable, like this is, this is it, like there's nothing else. Um, so with that understanding, um, I would encourage people just to point eyes to heaven um, and also encourage people that um, in the moments of greatest desolation, 
um, or trial or temptation even, Jesus is most present. And even when it's most hard to recognize this or uplift our heart to him um, in those moments, um, that's when um, he loves us the most. And also when um, the merit, the eternal merits of our praise to him and our eternal Um, the merit and reward, eternal reward, I should say, eternal reward of our praise to him and thanksgiving to him um, is even more beautiful. And I know it would be blessed and um, so many graces um, will stem from that. And um, we will only know of the benefits when we get to heaven. Um, God willing, we get to heaven. Um, So I think that's encouraging that, um, yeah, um, like, Praise starts today, and one day it will pay off. Um, so um, in moments of doubt and just doubting his love, um, praise him. It builds trust, and it it rewards us, and it rewards our Father, too. Whether on earth or in heaven, we will see the fruits of prayer, um, every prayer, every um, surrendering of our heart, we will see the rewards of. Um, so... Um, yeah, it, it just needs to start now and no need to postpone it um, or to uh, procrastinate it. Just right now, start, um, yeah, just praising him. It builds trust. Um, and eventually we will come to the knowledge um, that he does love us. So I think that's another thing that, um, at least in my case, that um, in moments of my greatest doubt, all I needed was knowledge of his kingdom and his ways And in learning of his ways, um, I began to know and learn of his love for me. Um, So I think, yeah, just seeking truth in those moments too. So maybe read a chapter of the gospel each day to really know um, and desire to know um, the ways, um, God's ways and the ways of Jesus and the gospel. Um, And also another encouragement is... um, Jesus, he endured um, all trials, all pain, and all suffering. There's not one aspect of the human suffering that um, he doesn't know or the human suffering that he doesn't know. Um, So that gives me a sense of encouragement, too, because um, everything that any human can experience has already been experienced by our God. Um, um, As Yeah, Jesus, he endured everything. Um, So... Uh, yeah, that is so encouraging because oftentimes in despair or desolation, we feel like we're alone. But with the great knowledge that Jesus already endured this um, gives me encouragement that um, he loves us. Like if our God became man to endure this, um, of course he loves us. Um, And he endured all suffering, all humility. So we just need to run to him and um, he will lead us to the Father. Thank you for listening to Megan's story. I would love to share your story as well. Please reach out to us on social media or by clicking on the join us link at knowhis.love.